atavistic epiphysis and finally aberrant epiphysis. These are four kinds of epiphysis that you may see in a long bone. What is a pressure epiphysis? Now, what is the pressure epiphysis? Guys, pressure epiphysis is that part of a long bone which takes on the pressure, which forms the joint. So, wherever you all, uh, whenever you uh, hear this term articular, whenever you hear this term articular, you just close your eyes and it has to be the pressure epiphysis. All the pressure epiphysis are articular, they are making joint. Take an example, head of the femur, head of the humerus, condyles of the tibia, anything which is making a joint is pressure epiphysis because they are the part of a bone, long bone which are taking on the pressure. Remember one word in it that is condyle, condyle, all of you know condyle, we have condyles in the humerus, we have condyles in the tibia, we have condyles uh, in the femur, condyles, whenever you have this word condyles, condyles are always articular, they are always articular. You take any condyle, you take any example, whether it is a condyle of the, uh, this humerus or the femur or the tibia, they are all articular and when condyle is articular, it has to be pressure epiphysis. So, if you find any condyle in your option, it definitely is a pressure epiphysis. So, do remember the word articular and condyle when it comes to pressure epiphysis. Well, example, example you already know, we have head of humerus, we head of femur, all the condyles, many, many examples. Next we have traction epiphysis, next we have traction epiphysis. Now as the name suggests, what is a traction epiphysis? Obviously the articular surface of a long bone, we, have already, we are already calling it a pressure epiphysis. Now traction epiphysis is that part of the epiphysis, end of the long bone, which is basically developed by the traction of a ligament or a muscle. Now when you look at the upper end of a humerus, what are the projections that you see on the upper end of the humerus? Yes, you see greater tubercle and you see lesser tubercle. So, traction epiphysis, example for the traction epiphysis, you will find the examples of traction epiphysis at the end of the long bones, just exclude the articular area like greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, then we have medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, then we have radial styloid process, ulnar styloid process, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter all these which are present at the end of a long bone and are not articular are traction epiphysis. So, I am giving you few examples like we have greater and lesser tubercle, then you can write few more, we have greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, styloid process, both the styloid, radial styloid, ulnar styloid and both the malleoli, medial mellulus, lateral mellulus. So, th all these, even the mastoid process, all these process or projection of a bone which are developed due to the traction are regarded as traction epiphysis. Now, we said articular, pressure epiphysis are articular, so traction epiphysis are definitely non-articular. You will never see a traction epiphysis making a joint. Secondly, condyles, condyles word we use for the pressure epiphysis. Guys, epicondyles, all the epicondyles, none of the epicondyle in the body is articular. You take any epicondyle, they are not forming any joint, they are just simple projection from where either the muscle is originating or inserting. So, Whenever you hear, hear this word epicondyle, epicondyle, it has to be traction epiphysis. So, these are few key words that you need to remember all the time, the condyles, the epicondyles, articular, non-articular. So, this will help you uh, to get to your answer. Next in the line, we have at atavistic epiphysis. 
what is atavistic what is atavism atavistic epiphysis 